Hey guys, it's Kingdom Orange 2 here, and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to take a look back at a French magical cartoon called Lolly Rock, which followed a group of magical princesses who are also in a band. Though my goal is never to speak poorly about a show and its writers, for this particular video my criticism was a little bit harsher than usual. Mostly because while I felt like the show had interesting transformation sequences and songs, it really seemed to lack in the plot department. And even though I still am a big fan of this cartoon, I really didn't enjoy watching it a second time around. Interestingly enough, the production team of Lolly Rock did answer a lot of fan questions on their Tumblr blog, which I will link below in the description. However, since there were some questions they didn't respond to or points they never elaborated on, I will simply use it as a guide to try and examine some of my head scratchers. Now, with all that being said, let's talk about the six things in Lolly Rock that never made sense to me. Backstory. The first thing that never made sense to me about this cartoon was the backstory. Fifteen years ago, the king and queen of the planet Ophidia were imprisoned by an evil sorcerer named Greymore. Before his attack, the queen sent her daughter Iris to live with her royal guard Alira, aka Aunt Ellen on Earth. The Queen of Ophidia possessed a magical crown which Greymore tried to obtain for himself, but before he could do so, the Queen sealed the crown away, causing its oracle gems to scatter throughout the Earth. In turn, her magic caused Greymore to become trapped inside the throne room of the castle, never able to escape. Years later, Talia, Princess of Cirrus, and Ariana, Princess of Volta, are sent to Earth to look for Iris. Knowing that Iris's powers come from her singing voice, the girls form a band and hold auditions to search for her, which eventually works out. Now that's the gist of it, but a couple things don't add up. First of all, it's never explained who sent the girls to Earth, or how they knew to go to Earth and search for Iris and the gems there. Another thing is that Ariana and Talia's backstories don't seem to line up with the events of Iris's. Talia, Ariana, and Iris are the same age, so if Greymore was trapped inside Iris's castle when she was a baby, why do we see him physically attacking the palace of both Zerus and Volta when Ariana and Talia were children? And adding further onto that, where were Talia and Ariana raised after this attack? The band. So I guess my next topic isn't really a head scratcher and more of a critique, but why exactly are the girls in a band in the first place? Now obviously the short answer would be that the writers put the girls in a band to draw attention to the show. It adds an element of interest for people to want to tune in, and honestly it works. I found the songs to be really catchy and the dance choreography fun to watch. But the reason for continuing the band after they found Iris doesn't really make sense. Talia is very stern when it comes to the girls spending time practicing their magical spells and completing their mission. So why would she want to waste time practicing for a band? On top of this, Talia is constantly getting on the girls to be careful about keeping their magic a secret. Why would she be okay with them summoning their wands on stage or even creating a spaceship and blasting off to the moon while they were performing? Crystal Spells and the Arena Magic in the Lolly Rock universe manifests itself in the form of crystals. The princesses, or wielders of good crystal magic, usually have spells that begin with the word crystal and then end in a word that sounds vaguely Latin, such as Crystal Deflectus or Crystal Lucius. The show's villains, or wielders of black magic on the other hand, also have spells that sound vaguely Latin, such as Gladius or Anima Novo, but they don't begin with the word crystal. One thing I noticed, however, is that almost every time the girls would fight a monster in the arena, they would always use a bunch of different spells and then end the battle by summoning their wands and performing the spell Crystal Luxtra. And when Lena and Carissa are present while fighting, the spell becomes Crystal Quinta. But if these spells are mostly guaranteed to destroy their enemies, why not use it first and save time? Now I do remember Talia telling Iris that they only use Crystal Quinta as a last resort because it requires a lot of power and makes them exhausted. But isn't it more exhausting to be jumping around, using a lot of different spells, than having to use Crystal Quinta anyways? Well, I know some people say that the writers obviously do this because fights would be boring if they ended so abruptly, but they couldn't instead find more creative ways to end these battles? And speaking of arenas, why do the girls fight in an arena in many episodes? Well, the production team on the Lolly Rock Tumblr answered this, claiming that the battle arena was a pocket dimension that allowed the girls to fight without worrying about exposing their powers or hurting nearby civilians. But honestly, I found this response to be a little odd, as I've never heard of an animated show worrying about background character safety or the destruction of buildings. It seems to me like it was more of a financial issue in regards to spending too much money on animating more backgrounds. Shanilla. In episode 19 of the first season, Iris wakes up and finds that she's missing large clumps of her hair. Confused and concerned, Talia tells her that she's going through a process known as Shanilla, which occurs when a girl passes from her first stage of magical development into the next one. Once Iris obtains Shanilla, her hair will grow back and her powers will become stronger. At the end of the episode, Iris achieves her Shanilla, and not only does her hair grow back, but she sprouts wings, stops time, teleports people, and creates large energy blasts. 
In the next episode, Iris is back in her typical magical princess dress. But we do, however, see Iris use her chinilla form twice after she gets it. The first was when the twins steal Azira's medallion and cause everyone to become trapped inside crystal statues. Iris transforms into her chinilla and uses the medallion to turn back time so that she can keep it safe. The second was when Iris uses it to finally defeat Greymore in battle. But here's my question. Why would the animators go through all this effort to create a transformation that we only see a couple of times? It already didn't really make sense that once Iris achieved chinilla, she never used it, but why was it introduced in some random episode in season 1 and not as a new transformation used for season 2? Also, if Talia and Ariana had Chanel forms, why do we never see them? Surely they would have been useful in the battle against Greymore in the last episode. Lena and Carissa. At the end of the first season, we were introduced to two new magical princesses, Lena from Borealis and Carissa from Calyx. Now, the production team on the Lolly Rock Tumblr mentions that the show's producers wanted season two to feature a five princess gang. However, reluctant that the show had too many characters, the girls were still added to the group but served as supporting characters who helped the girls occasionally in times of need. The pair also didn't live in the house or perform in the band. But honestly, what was really the purpose of these two? I guess adding two more princesses would be good from a marketing perspective. But weirdly enough, Lolly Rock didn't sell much merchandise, as they only created DVDs, books, and Happy Meal toys that were sold at McDonald's in France. And the biggest crime that Lolly Rock committed was never creating dolls, but it did seem at one time they sold little action figurines. And while I did enjoy seeing two new princesses added to the lineup, I found Lena and Carissa to be kind of annoying at times. I partially blame this on their voice actresses, because as much as I love both Kelly Sheridan and Tabitha St. Germain, their performances for these characters wasn't that great. The ending. Season 2 ends with Iris and the other princesses destroying Greymore and freeing her parents from his prison. During the battle, Mephisto is also knocked off a cliff and presumably killed. Praxina finds a piece of Greymore's mask and appears in the throne room, now more powerful than ever. She tells Iris that she's going to exact revenge, not on Ophidia, but on her home planet Earth. Then the story ends with Iris heading back to Earth and reuniting with Nathaniel, who believes she had moved away. While I do enjoy a good cliffhanger, I hate when shows are cancelled after one. Now obviously I know the writers had no control over this, but I do have a couple of questions in regards to how the show's seasons are produced. First of all, while I can't find any any confirmation on this from their Tumblr page, it does seem like the writers heavily planned out Season 2 while creating Season 1. If you think about it, Season 2 is just the second part of Season 1. It's the same exact storyline, the same villain, the same mission, etc. So I find it hard to believe that the writers didn't plan on the princesses defeating Greynor at the end of Season 2. Also, with that being said, what ideas do they have planned for Season 3? Well, again, I know that they would probably never share these on Tumblr, I felt their idea of Praxina being the main villain wouldn't have been super interesting. It could have been in, but honestly, the show seemed over once Iris reunited with her family. One thing I noticed while writing for this video was how the Lolly Rock team would always mention budgeting as a reason for certain aspects of the show, such as the girls never being seen attending school or Lena and Carissa's transformation being different from the other characters. I did find that odd though, especially since this is the same company that created Totally Spies, a cartoon where the girls would be wearing different outfits every single day. But when editing clips for this video, I did notice how much time and effort the animators put into choreographing the music videos and designing the girls stage outfits. If you guys want to discuss more about this show, feel free to comment down below or check out my Instagram and TikTok pages. It's the same username for both and I love talking about dolls, cartoons, as well as meeting new people. If you like this video today and want to see more content in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching today and I will see you soon. Bye!